Indonesia is the world's largest archipelagic country and home to more than 17,000 islands, many geographically isolated and distant. Out of the country's 111 remote islands, only 42 are inhabited. Unlike households on the major islands that enjoy 24-7 access to electricity, many people on these remote islands have limited or no access to electricity. The government has an electrification program targeting island communities in disadvantaged, remote, and frontier regions. One of these is Ngano Island, part of Bengkulu province and located around 160 kilometers from the southwestern coast of Sumatra. At 400 square kilometers, Engano Island is only half the size of New York City and around two-thirds the size of Jakarta. Reaching the island requires taking a short flight or a 12-hour boat ride from the provincial capital, Bengkulu. With a population of only 4,000 people, life on the island is low. The local residents usually spend most of their free time relaxing, a far cry from the hustle and bustle of metropolitan cities like Jakarta. But unlike the brightly lit streets and houses of Jakarta, Engano's residents used to light their homes with makeshift oil lamps. This was because the island had no access to electricity until 2014, when the central government helped install a solar power plant on the island. But fast forward to 2023, the solar panels supplied by the government and installed amid vegetation and dense forest are covered in moss and debris. So, what happened to them? The Jakarta Post recently visited Engano Island to discover the challenges of electrifying Indonesia's remote islands. The disused solar panels are located in Banjar Sari, a village on the western tip of Ingano Island. The people who live in the village still remember a time when Banjarsari was shrouded in darkness. Banjarsari village head Suprik said local residents had to find their own means of lighting their homes. Those well-off bought portable diesel generators, but the less fortunate made do with makeshift oil lamps locally called Lampu Tonggok. Dengan adanya bantuan dulu dari SDM, disalurkanlah ke Desa Banjasari, karena di Desa Banjasari ini emang khususnya mengharapkan adanya listrik, misalnya untuk penerangan warga, kebutuhan warga. When the solar panels were in operation, they supplied electricity to around 170 households, more than half of the village. The arrival of the solar power plant altered the lives of Banjar Sari residents, like 65-year-old Sauda. Sauda was born and raised on Engano Island before any electricity or modern lighting had been introduced. She recalled how the residents had to buy kerosene from Warung for their oil lamps the fuel delivered by fishing boats from Bengkulu. Since the island had no electricity, Sauda used non-electrical household appliances. Setrika pakai itulah tempurung dibakar itu kayu dibakar diambil itunya kan arengnya masukin ke situ itulah pakai ngegosok itu juga itu pun kalau kita mau pergi ke pesta Mau hari besar, kalau enggak tuh enggak juga kami ngegosok om capek kami. After the solar power plant was installed, Sauda started using electrical appliances like a rice cooker and a TV at her home, where she lives with her two daughters and their husbands. Sekarang alhamdulillah lah semenjak udah listrik maju nih kan udah hidup, udah. But it wasn't long before the solar power plant started running into problems. Over time, the solar panels became less and less reliable due to their constant use, which drained the battery's capacity. 
In addition, the residents were left to their own devices in maintaining the equipment. But without training, they had very limited knowledge on what to do when the solar panels started malfunctioning. Semenjak ini ada di Desa Banjarsari ini, pengurusnya kayaknya belum pernah ada pelatihan. Cuma misalnya itu inisiatif dari desa membentuk pengurus untuk pengelolaan. Pengelolaan barang ini biar istilahnya berjalan gitu kan. Jadi istilahnya ada yang jaga, ada yang merawat, dan ada yang melihat ke rumah-rumah warga gitu. The solar panels could be operated only on sunny days and lasted only until an hour after midnight. By 2019, the solar panels stopped working and so they were abandoned. Banjarsari is not the only village on Engano Island to have enjoyed solar power. In 2016, the government installed solar panels in Kahiapu village located on the other side of the island. And just like Banjarsari, the residents of Kahiapu also struggled to keep their solar power plant running. The technicians who installed the solar panels did not train the villagers how to maintain the power plant, which experienced three separate technical issues. As a result, the Kahiapu residents had to bring technicians from mainland Sumatra. They also had to buy additional batteries for the solar power plant. But unlike Banjarsari, the solar power plant in Kahiapu is still operating today, even with some wear and tear. Kahiapu village secretary Siswandi said it was nothing short of a miracle that the solar power plant was still working. Dalam arti kata PLTS ini bisa berfungsi sampai enam tahun ini memang luar biasa. Mulai dari baik segi karena terus terang. PLTS ini dibangun, diserahkan, ilmunya tidak ditransfer kepada kami. Nevertheless, its capacity is now limited. The home of Kahiapu resident Kartini is connected to the solar power grid, but the electricity she gets is only enough to light a couple of bulbs. Kartini lives alone, as her children and grandchildren live in Bengkulu, and doesn't have many electrical appliances. She still uses a wood burning stove to cook. The electricity from the solar power plant is not always reliable either. During the rainy season, Kartini can only turn on her lights for a few hours. Tapi kalau kita sendiri nggak apa-apa biar gelap-gelap lah. Besok pagi baru. Tapi kalau dan ada cucu, ada piut, mama gelap, ma gelap, ma. Namanya anak kecil biasa terang kan. Sabar, besok pagi terang. As the Banjarsari solar power plant has been completely abandoned and the Kahiapu plant is unreliable, the residents of Engano Island have started to switch to diesel fueled power plants. The government introduced the diesel plant to Engano in 2017 and gradually increased its capacity. By early 2023, the diesel power plants were able to provide electricity 24-7 to the entire island via the centralized power grid of state electricity company PLN. Kebetulan PLTD yang masuk, ya berarti banyak ke PLTD karena dia sangat istilahnya terjangkau lah sama masyarakat karena kebutuhan masyarakat tercapai dengan adanya itu. For 50-year-old Kahiapu resident Hari Saptono, the arrival of the diesel power plant has allowed him to expand his business. Originally from Lampung province on the southern tip of Sumatra, Hari moved to Engano in 1995. He used to work at various jobs before opening a small corner store in 2005. At the time, Hari used a portable diesel generator to power his house and business for six hours from dusk to midnight. The introduction of the solar power plant in 2016 also helped his business. PLTS ya alhamdulillah sangat membantu kami dari jam 12 malam tadi pakai diesel mati nyambungnya sampai pagi itu PLTS. But the diesel plant has been a game changer for Hari's business. In 2020, he opened a small ice making factory and a filtered water business. Now that electricity is available at all hours, Hari plans to expand his business and increase productivity. 
karena di kepulauan ini sangat butuh penerangan seperti kayak daerah-daerah luar itu harapan kami kami juga anak pulau ingin 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 menikmati penerangan seperti kayak di luar The experience of Engano's residents highlights the frequent challenges that the government encounters on its mission to electrify the country's remote regions. Fahmi Radi, an energy economist from Gajah Mada University in Yogyakarta said, remote regions often lack power distribution networks. Consequently, the government sometimes resorted to diesel power plant as the easiest, most readily available, and most affordable way to electrify islands like Ngano. Ali Akbar, chairman of Bengkulu-based environmental group Kanopi Hijau Indonesia said, the government was yet to prioritize renewable energy in remote regions. Even when remote regions generated their own electricity using renewable energy, like the solar power plant in Banjarsari and Kahiapu, he said electricity from PLN would still be prioritized despite its use of fossil fuels. Sumber energi listrik PLN dianggap paling oke, okay, paling keren, enggak mantap kalau kita tidak ini menggunakan listrik dari PLN. Yang kedua, inisiatif dari tingkatan komunitas itu dibatasi. While diesel might be a shortcut to electrifying the country's remote regions, energy experts emphasize that renewables' potentials should still be explored in view of local conditions. We have to find a solution to solve the entire area with the use of the power plant that is in the area of the country. Misalnya di situ daerah pulauan yang bisa menggunakan hidro misalnya akan tenaga air atau juga misalnya di daerah terpencil misalnya itu bisa menggunakan biogas gitu ya yang eh, diterapkan dalam bentuk eh, apa farming. This is because Indonesia is transitioning away from fossil fuels to renewable energy to fulfill its net zero goals as part of its climate strategy. Fossil fuels like diesel also pose disadvantages for powering remote islands. During a storm, Engano Island could be cut off from logistical supplies including fuel, which would leave its residents without power. Some Ingana residents share Fami's concern and still hope their island will be fully electrified through renewable energy in the future. Yang pertama kami juga mengucapkan terima kasih karena baru dalam dua atau tiga bulan ini PL, itu PLN di Ingana ini kan sudah 24 jam ya Pak ya. Namun kalau boleh kami berharap tentunya kalau harapan kami kalau untuk sumber energinya mungkin lebih baiknya ke energi terbarukan karena kalau ya seperti kita ketahui tadi kan keadaan kita ini di pulau kalau menggunakan energi diesel ya kan mulai dari bahan bakarnya transportasinya dan juga dari dampak itunya lingkungan segala macam itu kan tentu jauh berbeda dari dengan kita menggunakan energi terbarukan they might just get what they wish for as a government plans to phase out diesel and replace it with renewable energy, even for remote regions. Juan Har, Director of Electricity Development at the Energy and Mineral Resources Ministry, confirmed the plan. Pemerintah bersama PLN juga sudah punya program, Pak. Mm -hmm. Sekarang itu istilahnya dedieselisasi. Nah, yang diesel-diesel tadi, mm -hmm. kita ini kan, kita akan ubah. Uh, menjadi sumbernya itu yang EBT. The ministry has identified solar as a key renewable for developing as an energy source since almost all regions in the equatorial archipelago have solar potential. 
Since 2012, the government has installed at least 613 community-run solar power plants that generate enough electricity to light around 20,000 houses in remote regions. Now that all of Engano Island has electricity, the lives of its residents have improved. They can open new businesses or expand their existing businesses. Their children can study at night and fishers can store their catch in refrigerators. Meanwhile, Engano residents continue to dream of the day that their electricity comes from clean energy sources. Kahiapu Secretary Siswandi recognizes the environmental hazards of using diesel to generate the island's electricity. More importantly, there are still residents like Kartini whose homes are not connected to the central power grid. Kartini hopes that the Kahiapu solar power plant can be fixed and perhaps increased in capacity so it can continue to light her home. And with more reliable electricity from the solar power plant, Kartini's grandchildren will no longer need to be afraid of the dark.